I am Groot. We are Groot. You are Groot. Welcome to Groot. I am Groot. Guardians of the Galaxy was definitely a huge movie of 2014, and we've talked about it in a few videos already, including this video right here about why Peter Quill is called Star-Lord. But today, I want to talk about another character from the movie that turned out to be pretty popular, Groot. Groot has inspired so much amazing art and costumes, a button that Grootifies websites, and even the act of Grooting became a thing. So why does it seem like Groot, more than any other character, has become so popular? To understand it, let's first take a look at the broad spectrum of why we like comics and cartoons in the first place. Now, there can be many, many reasons why you individually read comics or watch cartoons, but I'm going to be focusing a lot on the second chapter of Scott McCloud's eye-opening book, Understanding Comics, which I highly recommend to all of you if you haven't read it. Link in the description. In the book, McCloud points to what he calls the primary cause for our fascination in cartoons as the ability to see ourselves in them. To put it on an extreme scale, you are watching a video of me. There's no question that the person in this video is me. But if I'm replaced by a stick figure, then I could be anyone, especially if I were to take away my very manly voice and just have a word balloon. In all of art, you have a spectrum that measures from realistic resemblance all the way to the base meaning. From a photo of a tree to the written word tree. And somewhere in the middle, we have comics and cartoons. But why is this important? McLeod points out that the picture we have in our minds of our own faces is not the same one that people actually see. Despite what we may think, we do not have a vivid, ultra-detailed picture of what we look like stored in our minds. Instead, we only have a general awareness of our face that's not nearly as accurate as images we have of other people's faces. So when you look at me, you see me in all of my detail that separates me from any other human being. And because of that, it's hard to picture yourself as me. But it's infinitely simpler to picture yourself as this stick figure, because it's more closely represents the image you have of yourself in your mind. A head, two eyes, and a mouth. It's a blank slate that could represent literally any person, and not just including you, but probably especially you. There's an article I'll link to below that asks why Japanese anime characters look white. In reality, they are not white. We as Americans perceive them as white, but the Japanese see them as, well, Japanese. I mean, maybe you personally don't see them that way, but I was just glad to find out that I am not the only person who's had that thought before. We all have this idea inside our heads called the default human being. You see your default human being inside of this stick figure. Whether that person is a man, a woman, a child, adult, white, black, Asian, anything else could be totally different for you than anybody else. So the reason you may have thought that anime characters don't necessarily look Asian is because artists aren't trying to make them look Asian. They're just trying to make them look like people. Their default human being is Japanese anyway, so why would they need to add any distinguishing features to further indicate that? The idea here is that the more neutral a character is, the more we as an audience see ourselves in them. Groot has the basic shape of a human, but much like simple cartoons, his facial features are just two eyes and a mouth, making him easy to project ourselves into. This idea idea of cartoons or simple characters being more relatable isn't anything new. Uh, think of cartoons and animations with detailed or even photorealistic backdrops and scenery. You'll notice that they still draw the characters in a very simple style because they are our windows into that world. But what about live action movies where you can't exactly render Robert Downey Jr. as a cartoon set in the real world and have everybody be okay with that? Unless maybe you are okay with that. Well, there's no mistaking Robert Downey Jr. for Robert Downey Jr. You put him in a neutral mask and suddenly that could be you in there. And same goes for Spider-Man and Rorschach and probably to a lesser extent, Batman, Dread, or even Captain America. Look, that's not Chris Evans, silly goose. But Groot goes much further than all of these characters to ensure that we have no trouble at all relating to him. For starters, Groot is Groot all the time. Unlike Iron Man or Spider-Man who can take off their mask and reveal an absolute human face and body, with Groot, what you see is what you get. Not only that, but his body regenerates. Even if his arm is cut off, he'll just grow it back so he looks exactly the same as before. While other characters might have scars or physical imperfections or maybe have even undergone dramatic changes that set them apart, Groot refuses to upset the status quo by doing his hardest to maintain his form to allow people to experience the journey and excitement of guarding the galaxy vicariously through him. And even if he's completely obliterated, eh. No real damage done, put me in a pot, play some Jackson 5, and I'll literally be as good as new in no time. 
But Groot takes it all a bit further than mere appearance. For starters, there doesn't even seem to be an explicit age tied to Groot in the movie. His actions are both seemingly mature and childlike. Plus, we see him represented as both large and small, making it even more difficult to pin down an exact age, but it also means that he could easily relate to a wider range of people young and old. And there's even something further to Groot that makes him stand out. One of his most obvious characteristics, his speech. Groot is not much of a talker. He has a very limited vocabulary, slightly larger than Hodor. Hodor. Whenever he says, I am Groot, he usually means something else. And depending on the situation, we as an audience either need to try and interpret that ourselves based off of context clues, or we have someone like Rocket do it for us. I am Groot. So what is better than 11%? What happens in this scene is pretty special. Like this video by Cracked points out, Groot says, I am Groot, and Rocket tells us what his intent was, and now our minds go back to fill in the context. But we're doing so in our own voices. So not only is it easy to see ourselves as Groot, but we're actually hearing ourselves as the character as well. Now, none of these characteristics are really new. Characters can be blank slates, heal back to normal, represent multiple age groups, or are inarticulate. But, that's it. but Groot mixes them all together to try and represent the most people possible. And now I'm going to say something that will sound pretty crazy, but I want you to hang in there, okay? Here we go. Groot is a comic book character that represents comic books. I know, I know, sounds pretty crazy, but hear me out. As we said in this video so far, comics provide us with characters in which we see ourselves, but they also, for the most part, provide words for us to read as well. And when you read those words, you're doing it in your own voice. I pulled some of my friends to see if they hear a specific actor's voice in their head when reading certain comic book characters, and most of them said that there's at least one character that they read in a very distinct head voice, like Kevin Conroy for Batman, Nolan North for Deadpool, etc. However, all of them said that they read a majority of the characters in their own voice. You see, comics provide both characters to see ourselves in and words to hear ourselves in. Other forms of media like books, movies, TV shows, they usually just give us one or the other to choose from. Or video games sometimes do both simultaneously, but comics in their native format almost always give you both. Silent comics would be one exception, but believe me when I say that we'll dive into much more detail about comics as an art form in the near future. But you see how Groot could represent those facets of the comic book medium. He's a near perfect physical abstraction and he allows us to hear the meaning behind his words in our own voices. Much like comics give us characters that are drawn in a simplified way and the ability to read their words and thoughts as ourselves. However, with all the ways he makes for a wonderful human stand-in, there's one way he does not. Groot is male. Therefore, he isn't a 100% perfect analog for any and all human beings. That being said, it's definitely possible for women to relate to Groot or any other male character and vice versa for men and female characters. The real perfect human abstraction goes right back to the stick figure. This could be anyone, guy, girl, old, young, white, black, anything else. Groot might be the closest we have to this. After all, he himself is a literal stick figure. What do you guys think? Do we like Groot because his design and personality make it inherently easy to project ourselves in him? And even if you don't like Groot, can you at least see a correlation between his, for lack of a better word, mechanics as a character and the unique experience that comics provide? Let me know in the comments. Boy, do I have about a million more things that I wanna say about this episode that could go into much more detail if that's even possible, but I'll leave that as a separate post on our Patreon feed for all of our wonderful NerdSync patrons if they wanna dive into my extended thoughts. There's a link in the description if you wanna go check it out for yourself. And guys, this was the 46th episode of Comic Misconceptions, which means we only have a few more until number 50. I haven't really decided on a way to celebrate this yet, so I wanted to leave it up to you guys. What kind of 50th episode would you like to see? Let me know in the place where the comments go. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, we'd love you to hit that big sexy subscribe button. We do weekly comic book videos like this one every Wednesday, and we don't want you to miss out on any of it. I do apologize for being off last week, though. Sorry. Once again, I'm Scott, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, and we'll see you right here next week for more things that you thought you knew about comics. See ya.